Hey guys. So, if you look, you can probably tell where we are. Guess what happened since we talked to you guys last time? Cruz is here! Yeah, Cruz decided to show up. Yeah. Um, we thought we were gonna make it to, or make it through what, 30? Through our 38th week. week. We did not. He came the morning of 38 weeks and six days. Yeah. So literally just didn't make it to the 39th week. Yeah. He is, um, whoa. He's whoa. He's no, labor was whoa. Yeah, labor so was whoa. So let's woe. just talk about that, mm -hmm. okay? It's a little bit of a long story. Um, we are still at the hospital because I had to end up having a C-section. Mm -hmm. And I had to end up having a C-section because some stuff went down, okay? So first off, my water broke, and I didn't know that my water was broken. Um, I thought that it was just my mucus plug and some discharge. So ladies, the water is not this gushy thing that you always see in the movies. It's not always super watery either. So it may still have some consistency to it where it's a little bit sticky and you may get a little bit of it at a time, which is kind of what happened to me. So I believe that Tuesday, whenever I thought that I was just going to urinate often, part of that was actually my water. Um, but I didn't start active contractions until Wednesday afternoon, so about a day later. Yeah. Um, whenever they started, they were about 20 or 30 minutes apart by the time I thought to think about measuring them. My mom is actually the one that gave me the idea. Yeah. She was like, so how often is this happening? And I said, hmm, I haven't measured that at all. Um, so by that time, it was about 20 or 30 minutes apart. And then they got closer and closer and closer together. So they started probably around noon or so they were about um 20 or 30 minutes apart and we came to the hospital at 9 p.m yeah she um i was still i was at work she was off mm -hmm. and uh she was like christopher i don't know if he if i'm like having actual i don't know if these are braxton or, hicks yes, or you know, real, real contractions. contractions so she whenever she's like talking like that and she's you know, like, I'm having more discharge. I think this is more real. <laughs> well, anyway, we get home. We do other stuff before him. We get home and having, like, pain. Like, like I, the biggest pain. thing is, like, it was hurting. Yeah. Like, I was having something. Yeah. And I knew it was hurting, but I was expecting it to. I wasn't necessarily crying because of the pain. I was crying because I was like, I don't know if these are real or not real. I don't know if I should go or not go. And like, I, I've never been hospitalized before. This is my first time being in a hospital or having a hospital stay for myself. And so I didn't, I was like, I would rather be at home and be comfortable as long as I can before I go. Um, and at one point, Christopher said to me, he's like, okay, how long are you gonna let this yeah. go on before we go? Yeah. So finally around 9 p.m., um, I was like, okay, let's get things together and head that way. We got here and once we finally got into a room, which took us a little while because they yeah. didn't have any rooms available. Um, once we finally got into a room, we found out that that was indeed my water that had broken. So they have a little litmus paper that they can put into the discharge and kind of, um, if it turns the dark color, then that's amniotic membrane, amniotic cells. Um, if it, and if it doesn't change, um, then it's not. It was just the discharge. And so as soon as they put that down there and it changed colors, like within seconds, she was like, yep, that was your water. And since your water's broken, you're staying here. Yeah. I was only dilated to a centimeter at that point, so I still had a lot of work to go. And um, so they hooked me up with a monitor for me, a monitor for him. Um, to follow us from there and then I'll let you tell them about the monitor debacle. Oh, okay. Okay, so They have like she said an external monitor on on her stomach to well two different monitors They couldn't really keep the monitor for him on that well. He just it moved was on but yeah. he, it wasn't tracking yeah. him well because he moved a lot. He's there. so active. Yeah. yeah, so you know it was okay for a little bit because you know, she was doing fine, and her contractions weren't like super fast. Yeah. It was still spread out. And they weren't super painful at that point. Yeah, well then she started to kind of have a little bit more pain. They hooked her up to a fluid IV, and then they, you know, 
they kind of gave her a little bit of morphine to kind of help her out. So kind of gave her a little it, bit of morphine. It didn't, <laughs> it didn't help out at all. Really. Nothing. At, well, I guess was it after that or before that? Maybe before that, they they asked her if she wanted morphine, and once she said yes, they were like, okay, well, we got to make sure we get a better, like, monitor on him. Mm -hmm. So they took the external monitor off of him because they couldn't pick him up that much. Like, literally, we would have to move the external monitor every time that I moved. Yeah. She would have to come and readjust it and find him again, yeah. or it would look like his heart rate went from 130 to zero. Yeah. So they did an internal monitor. Well, once they kind of like messed around and put the internal monitor in, it was like the contraction just went in overdrive. Yeah. So, or normal contractions don't last really long and they're kind of spread out. Yeah. Her contractions probably were like three minutes apart. Yeah. But they lasted like two, two and a half minutes. Yeah. So she didn't have the much rest. I had like there. 20 or 30 seconds in between these really strong and now really painful contractions. Yeah. So it was like once they did the manipulation, I guess let's call it, um, to try to get that internal um, fetal monitor for him, my body was not liking that and things started going really painfully yeah. very quickly. Yeah. yeah. And so she was doing good, but me and I just have to tell you, if you don't, if you're not emotional or about to lose it when your wife's in that much pain, I don't know what's wrong with you. Because there was a couple of times when I just had to keep, like, kind of gather myself because I just didn't like seeing my wife that, in that much pain. So she kind of tried to go through it as much as she could without getting an epidural. Because my plan was no epidural. Yeah. But once those two and a half minute contractions and only 20 seconds in between started coming, like, and wouldn't let up. They wouldn't let up. I, I couldn't. I was out. I was like, okay, I'm ready for the epidural. So they gave me the epidural, which sounds really scary, ladies, and sounds really painful. It was not very scary. I think we had a great set of doctors yeah, and nurses, yeah. though. Um, so they explained every step kind of as much as I needed to know, um, got me in the right position, um, and the insertion of it was not hard at yeah. all. Um, then the biggest thing is that they told me it does not work immediately. Yeah. <laughs> it takes about 15 minutes before it fully acts. So ladies, don't do like I did and wait till you get to your breaking point to ask for it. Yeah. Wait, you know, kind of get an idea and know if you have 15 minutes left in you uh, because it's going to take a little while to start dampening it um, right after they put it in. I thought it was going to be immediate. Yeah, because she... Whenever she did finally ask for the epidural, it was like, oh. I'm, I want the epidural now. I was like, now. And, then it and they like, said, oh, well, well, our anesthesiologist is in doing a C-section, so whenever they finish that, which will be about 20 minutes, then they'll come and do it. And I was yeah. like, oh, I don't know if I can wait 20 minutes. Yeah. And then they came in and they got it going and they said, okay, now it's going to take about 15 minutes to start kicking in. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm not going to make it. Uh, so... But anyway, yeah. I made it, we got the epidural, yeah. but then, yeah. once I got the epidural, probably 10 minutes into the 15 minutes that it takes to start really working, um, we noticed that my, like I started feeling kind of lightheaded, and they looked at my blood pressure, and my blood pressure had like bottomed out. Yeah. Meanwhile, Ooh. guess who else's blood or uh, um, heart rate, yeah. his pulse rate, started going down. So Cruz had been cruising in the 120s, 130s the entire time we'd been there, and then um, I could hear his fetal monitor, and it dropped down to what 68? Yeah, yeah it's like 68, 68 69, 70. Yeah. So then they got concerned. They went and called for an oxygen mask. Getting me more oxygen could help. And so then we started changing positions to try to get it to where his uh, heart rate came back up and my blood pressure did. So we tried a couple different positions, including with me on my hands and knees with an epidural. <laughs> Which is the craziest. Very thing interesting, see. ladies. But um, I got to do it, but it didn't help. Yeah, I think it was like... It was a couple of nurses, and then I even jumped in there to try to help her move her legs. Yeah. 
That was the craziest thing. Like, so we got me up, and um, it went up a little bit, but then it would kind of tank again. So um, our nurses called for the doctor that was on call, because this is all happening at 4 a.m., by the yeah, way, guys. Yeah. 4 a.m. And uh, so we got the uh, OBGYN that was on call, told him what was going on. He was in there within two seconds and said, uh, hey, Miss Watson, we're getting the baby out now. Yeah, which is me and again. When you're in there and you see your wife and stuff kind of is like going a little down, yeah. you're kind of like, I just need y'all to make sure that my wife's okay and make sure that this baby's okay. Yeah, because about eight people rushed in the room yeah. at that point and they were like throwing a bonnet on my yeah. hair and they were rolling me out of there and we were literally like in Grey's Anatomy yeah, running down the hallway. That's pretty much how I feel. On the way to the OR. And so. it's like, I don't know what to do. Like, I personally was like, I have no idea what's going on. I mean, like I knew what was going on and luckily, I mean, we both have some medical background, so, but I just, I, you know, you try not to go to the, the most negative thing yeah. To think about but it's always a possibility whenever they're running your gurney down the hallway it makes you think a little bit differently yeah. i was okay i was surprisingly i think christopher was a little bit more i was more scared scared about it than i was um i don't know if it's just because i was in the moment i think i knew we knew the doctors and we had yeah. developed a relationship with the nurses that I knew that they'd done this a thousand times yeah. before and um, I just had faith that God was going to see us through it and we were going to be fine. Yeah. So they rolled me into the OR. Um, Christopher, meanwhile, is getting dressed. I look up at the time, it's 427 and I remember, um, you know, by this point my epidurals kicked in so I'm really not feeling anything. They baited on everywhere and... Cruz Alexander Watson makes his entrance into the world at 4:32. So they got him out within five minutes of crazy. me being in there. Um, got him out really quickly, and uh, the rest is history. So. Yeah. So it was exciting, scary. I can't even think of other words to say. But I mean, the first time you just you see the little bundle of joy that you got. It's just it's like. And it's literally a bundle of joy because yeah. they like swaddle them all yeah. up and all you can see is this little face. He's, um, just, he's just cute. Because I was laying on the bed. Usually they try to give them to mom first, but yeah. in, the, in the case of a cesarean, I was still in surgery. So I got him first. So Christopher got to hold him first, but he put him, you know, they were had him right at my head so I could see him yeah. and talk to him. And then um, they got me all stitched up, got us back in a room. And they were really good about it. Um, moving pretty fast. Yeah. We're getting our stitched stuff from this. We were probably back in our room room at 5:15. Yeah, it was. It wasn't too much further behind. Yeah. So everything's good. I mean, I I was scared. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I was scared, but I was scared because I didn't want to lose my 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 wife. My good thing. I didn't want to lose my baby, but I got them both. So. Bam. So, uh, I guess we can do a little sneak peek of Yeah, you guys want to see him? One. He's adorable. I mean, look at us. You knew he was going to be adorable <laughs> anyway. We had already talked about this, but he came out with um, features of both of us. Yeah. He came out um, a good little blend yeah. of, so, the, of the both of us. I'm going to get him real quick. Okay. Y'all. He might start shrieking. He's usually really pretty good and pretty quiet and he calms down really quickly, so we'll see what happens. There's my nugget. Here is Cruz Alexander Watson. Say hi. He is just, hi guys. he's the cutest little thing. We were so excited and even though um, the delivery didn't really go the way we wanted it to go. Yeah. She labor didn't go how I wanted yeah, labor, it to go. <laughs> labor or delivery didn't go the way he wanted it to go, but he is just um He's perfection. He's he's perfect in our eyes. And he's check the hair. hair. I think he kinda got her skin tone, but he still has some time to darken up. We'll see. I don't know how much dark he's gonna get though. Um but yeah he's and we, he came out a little smaller than we thought. Mm -hmm. 
a little bit less weight right so he was four um came out at 4 32 a.m on may 18th and he was five pounds and 12 ounces mm -hmm. and 19 inches mm -hmm. long but he has my hands he's yeah. wrapped up he's got big old hands and, big long, and long feet long skinny feet so he can probably wear some of those shoes that he has already yeah yep but he is I just he's just cute and man you know men that have uh, children and a, a beautiful wife that they love I, I know that you have so many emotions whenever you have a have this experience and you're just like oh my goodness so it's like I'd do anything in the world to make sure that these two are taken care of so it's definitely it's so funny because it's like instantaneous some of the stuff that I guess hormonally happens to the woman as well like I'm instantly every little whimper that I hear I'm you know yeah. pop, I can be in a dead sleep and I pop my eyes open and check on him and you know just some of those things that are instinctual and um, that are God-given quite frankly yeah. that help you be equipped to start this new life because that is what it is yeah so funny how your perspective changed so much from talking about it to living it doing yeah. it but he's doing great so yeah, he's doing great so anyway we just wanted to show y'all that we did not make it to the last no. <laughs> make it through the last um i mean technically week. we're week 39 yeah. now but he came eight days early. Mm -hmm. Eight days. So definitely within the timeline to where everything that we've been doing here at the hospital, he's checked out great. We're really just here um, on my end more than anything. Um, just making sure that I'm doing okay with the cesarean and the um, incision and being able to move around and things like that before we go. But he is perfect. All right, well, we'll see y'all later, guys. Thank y'all for checking us out. This little bundle of joy is going to be at home in a little bit. Yeah, thanks for checking out all of our pregnancy yeah. videos during um, the last few weeks. Yeah. And uh, we'll probably have more videos going on as he starts to grow yeah. and change. Yeah. We appreciate you guys. And if you have not subscribed already, now is the time because you're going to get to see more cuteness like yeah. this all the time. I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely be checking in and kind of updating y'all on how we're doing with new parents. Little, yeah, being a parent. So, ah. all right, we'll catch y'all later. See bye. Ya. Bye bye. Goodbye, Cruzy. Be sleep. <laughs>